Hi, there's quite a lot of people on my recent dumpster diving video who uh, recommended that this uh, HP Thin Client, the T630 or the CT620 that I got from the dumpster here, uh, might be a perfect candidate for the Home Assistant uh, operating system. And I've been thinking about playing around with that. Not that I like smart homes or anything like that, but maybe I can do some solar uh, stuff with it. So, um, in it, like, uh, I think it talks to Solar Assistant in that regards, and I'm thinking about installing a second solar assistant which maybe talks the end phase I think that's possible maybe combine them together I don't know so I thought I'd just check that out first thing is to measure the power consumption because I don't want the bloody thing drawing you know 40 watts or something like that so uh, let's actually power it up 0.6 watts on standby here and uh, 16 watts 15 it's jumping up I think it jumped to 33 on the start, and this has got Windows embedded on it, so it's, it could certainly change depending on the OS. But uh, she's booting, she's booting, she's getting the Windows, and come on, you can do it. 14, 15 watts, at what lower than that? Because usually, like, you run these sort of things on a Raspberry Pi, which are going to be way under this, so I'd want, you know, under certainly single digit wattage, I want under the 10 watts. But no joy so far, but let's wait because Windows has various, uh, you know, dynamic uh, power things. But yeah, I like haven't gone into the bias of this thing yet and set it up or anything like that. But let's just see what we get for the stock. Oh, hello, 10. I saw 10 there for a second. This is the, uh, hey, 8, 8. There you have it. So that's just, yeah, once Windows just uh, set it in Windows embedded, settled down there. It looks like just doing nothing. Sitting there, oh, it jumps up to 11 occasionally, but uh, it's sitting there doing 8 watts. I'll just plug in the Etherneties and up. Oh, oh, 20 watts. Hello. <laughs> no, it's back down to, yeah, it's back down to 8. There you go. That's not too shabby. A little bit more than a uh, Raspberry Pi is going to take, I think, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> What's the modern one taking? But um, that's not bad. Okay, so press escape and we get into our boot menu here. We can get system information like this. There you go. Sure enough, T630. Uh, yeah, it's got AMD GX420 GI, Radeon, 2 gigahertz speed. Uh, we've only got 4 uh, gig of memory. Well, only when I was a boy, but I assume that's enough. Okay, boot menu and I have actually plugged in my uh, USB uh, stick down here. Um, I guess I could plug it into the outside, but isn't this like a booty uh, thing? But anyway, I, it probably doesn't matter. Boot menu, here we go. Uh, UEFI, boot sources. Yes, that's what we want. Oh, oh, it's not, it's not detecting any. Okay, yeah, it doesn't like that. So let me remove that and plug it into... Aha, uh -huh, that's better. Yep, I had to plug it into uh, one of the external USBs. So there you go, SanDisk uh, Partition 1. So that I've already installed. I've, uh, with uh, Balaner Etcher, I installed the Home Assistant and boom, we are booting. We are in like Flynn. Okay, I haven't installed Home Assistant before, but I assume, I don't know, all the nerds know what they're doing and uh, this should just work for a dummy like me. That's the plan anyway. And there you go, that's only drawing uh, just uh, eight and a half watts there doing the uh, install. So yeah, that looks like it's sort of like nominal base level operating power, which isn't too shabby, really. Um, for a processor that I believe is, is sort of like more better than even the best Raspberry Pi going today. We are installing the Haos, which is the Home Assistant operating system and it's taken a while, but, uh, and uh, yeah, I assume this will just um, overwrite the uh, 32 gig solid state drive, which we've got in here. Um, quite a few people said that was uh, plenty enough uh, to run this. It should be, because uh, this, uh, I think, uh, what was the binary? It wasn't that big. Oh, look, excellent. Uh, where we have a prompt. Home Assistant. Uh, Joshua? Error unknown. Come on, come on. Seriously? Help games. Help! There you go! See, the more complicated a system is, the more it has to help you out. Unfortunately, um, look what's happened. The power drawer has gone up. Uh, to a 13 watts average, maybe? Just sitting there? 
doing nothing? I don't like that. Um, I'm going to have to maybe get into the biasy thing and see if I can uh, slow this sucker down, because, you know, 14, 15 watts, that, that's a bit much. Well, apparently, um, I'm dumb, because um, I took the stick out and uh, Windows is still on there. I just assumed that it would have automatically installed onto the uh, solid-state drive internally, but nope, wah, 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 wah. Like, it didn't even give me an option to tell me where to install it. So, yeah, it's just installed it on the stick. Huh? Well, I asked Grok, and it said, um, do, uh, at the command line, do hardware info. So I did that, and it just went crazy and gave me all this hardware info. Um, so to see if it recognizes the drive, but I assume it will. So I'm supposed to now do um, OS install and then put the uh, slash dev and then the name of the drive. And it looks like device SDA1, is that, but that's the SanDisk, the, that's the 32 gig. Okay, excellent. SDA1, let's try that. Oh, this uh, command set is specifically designed for the home system and only works on those systems. It provides an interface to get it, yeah. Yeah, OS, install. Why didn't it let me do that? Why? Why? I've got command line access. I'm, I'm routing in, aren't I? Am I using the correct terminology, kiddies? Eh, what am I doing wrong? It shouldn't be this hard. Really? Could you, like, add an option when you, like, install this thing to, like, select which drive you want to install it on? I don't think that's much of an ask, is it? Or... Do I have to be literal and put HA OS install? Because, yeah, it says usage, uh huh. But I thought we were, I didn't have to put the HA because I was already at the HA prompt. But maybe that's it. So HA OS install dev slash SDA1. Let's try that. No, it didn't like that either. I've definitely got that correct. I've followed the instructions, at least uh, what I thought I should have to do. It's detected that drive. It's there. It's slash dev slash SDA1 slash dev slash SDA1 HA OS install. Ah, it tells me HA is not necessary in this HA CLI. Yeah, okay. <laughs> then I can get rid of that like I did before and nothing. Okay, I had a conversation with Grok, and it's uh, pretty darn helpful. Um, and it seems to think that I'm trying to install it on a partition and it needs to install it on the entire drive. So it uh, recommended LSBLK, but that didn't seem to work. But it just seems to think that I can do just SDA like this. So let me try that. Nope, it didn't like that either. I've done all sorts of things that Grok recommended, like uh, piping it uh, into less, which should pause the screen. That wasn't supported. So then it said I could uh, uh, like redirect that into a hardware TXT file. It didn't like that. Um, so yeah, uh, what am I doing wrong? All right, I'm not going to spend any more time on this now. I'm going to do something more productive. Leave it in the comments. What dumbass thing does dumb is dumbass Dave not doing? Catch you next time.